going to get kind of bossy. Did I know. That's part of my temperament. You knew it. You married me all. Oh. Ah, I knew you were bossy. Seeing things about your spouse that you already knew and you still, you still went still ahead got and got married. Ooh, but your oh. boss, your bossiness wasn't. My bossiness served you back then when we were dating. What do you say, served? It me? served you, you mean? meaning that. Explain. I got things done. Uh, I got things done. I handled yeah. my business. You told me that you liked it. You said. Oh, okay. And that you yes. said. Oh, you handled your business. Yes, you it pay was, your bills. It was. You're not was, asking me for no money. It was an attraction, but then on the <laughs> other side, it was just like something that wrong with you for real. You just don't do the most. But I, yes. I really, did. I'm not that. I am no, not, you're not, that I am not doing the I wasn't doing the most then, honey. I'm not, that's not even my temperament. But I think this conversation we're having now, couples should have that conversation now as looking back. Oh, and, and yes. And acknowledging yes. that you were doing the most, but I'm not that person now. And, and, and reflect on how much they've grown. Right. Or not grown. Or saying that, yeah, I, I got some mental health stuff. Mm -hmm. For real. Like a pa a pattern. Mm -hmm. A pattern. Mm -hmm. that Pay word, attention to the patterns. So we, 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 we got to go? I don't know. No, okay. No. <laughs> we, we sit here. So we're we're in Huntsville, Alabama. Yes, we're outside our friend's house. We're outside, house. so we're just in this vlog. So and it's go. raining. Yeah, we're just waiting. So we didn't want to get out in the rain. Yeah, so we're just in this vlog. See? Pattern. Mm. So we found probably, I mean, you probably knew it, but recently we found a lot of our clients have had the same type of situation, flow, <laughs> Occurrence. Oh, it's Lil D. Oh. <laughs> He's gonna be in our vlog. That's yeah, okay. Say hey. Hi. Okay. <laughs> so we seen a pattern in in our. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, be serious. Serious. So we're talking about patterns, and it's like if you if you have experienced experiences where there's the same thing happening. Mm -hmm. over and over and you're mm -hmm. arguing about the same thing over and over again stop arguing about it and say stop the pattern this is a damn i'm sorry this is a doggone pattern yep and if it's a pattern then it's coming from a place that started the pattern do you know the movie groundhog's day if you are having groundhog groundhog's day experiences then that means something's dysfunctional Groundhog's Day, the dude would go to sleep, wake up, go to work, and then he had a horrible day. He would go to bed, pray that that day would never come again, and then the next day it is the comes, same right, thing. It comes again. That's some of you all. So we're talking about yeah. We're talking about mental health. We did the vlog two vlogs ago, mm -hmm. no three now because we were done the one on mental health, one on career, and, and then one, one on parenting. parenting. So we're going to go back to mental health because yeah. we've got a lot of responses to really focus on mental health. And what we know as mental health professionals is that there is a large percentage of people walking around with undiagnosed mental health or emotional disorders. Right. And you find yourself frustrated being married to them, but it's because they're not diagnosed. So they're not getting treatment. So you stay in a pattern. Like we know someone who had a serious crisis last month. All month long, they were in crisis. And then we just saw them and they were wonderful. Do you know why? Someone in our household helped him get some mental health support. And now they have therapy and meds. And it's like a whole new person. That's what happens when you're treated. But some of y'all have been married to people with these disorders. They're functional at work, in the grocery store, at the bank. But in the interpersonal relationships, they are not. Because the interpersonal relationships, like husband and wife relationships, trigger emotions that none of those other relationships typically trigger 
So that's why they could go to work and you think that they're okay and they could, you know, go to church or they could interact with people. But in the interpersonal relationship, especially personality disorders, we're gonna probably do a whole series on the main common personality disorders because you all are probably married to some people that have them and you don't know that there's a name for it. Right. There's a name for it. If you see it happening interpersonally, then consistently that pattern that Dirk is talking about is a disorder and there's a name for it. See, look at the names going across the street. That's one, mm -hmm. that's two, that's three. Now these names are all clinical names. Mm -hmm. You probably wouldn't know what they really mean, but if you look at the characteristics and then you kind of say, oh, that's the one right there. Okay, mm -hmm. that's it right there. Mm -hmm. Most people know the mood disorders. They know depression, mm -hmm. they know anxiety. anxiety. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they use it out of context, <laughs> but most people know those, but the majority of people don't understand the personality disorders. Right, those are tricky. Yeah. Those are the ones that get, get through the door. <laughs> They get right, through the door, right. the door, the door's supposed to be closed. Right. But that one, you know, you ever you ever go to a party, you know, no more more no more people could come in and somebody slips in, that's right, personality that's disorder. Right, right there. That's a good example. That was good. <laughs> yeah. They slip in and before you know it, you're down the aisle, you marry, okay, okay, and you be okay. like, What did I just well, I got, okay, do? I'm gonna I'm gonna match your that was a good analogy. So the other one and I'm not gonna tell them what it is, but you take a guess of what I'm thinking. Okay. I'm thinking in my head. Okay. Boom. And the other one is like the one that's going through the back door. They knocking on the back door. Mm -hmm. Knocking on the back door. Somebody's knocking on the back door. Who's at the front door? No, it's the back door. What would that be? It's not a personality disorder. It's not a mood disorder, but it's a, it's a emotional behavior that takes place in the mind that people oh, don't understand. Oh, cognitive distortions. Bam. Co cognitive it's, distortions, it's, and that's so common. That's so the, cognitive distortions are created when trauma has happened uh, and it's so bad that instead of dealing with the reality, your brain subconsciously creates another reality but distorts the actual reality, and then it becomes a pattern in all the relationships.
experiences. It, so, for example, somebody, you come into somebody's house and you say, oh, my bad, I should have um, um, taken off my shoes. And then the next week you get an email from them saying that you didn't want to come in and walk on their carpet because you thought their carpet was probably stink and that's why you didn't take off your shoes. Mm -hmm. Like, stuff like that. Like, that's a cognitive distortion. If you mm -hmm. find yourself saying, why would they think that? And they keep doing that? Or, that's a cognitive or, distortion. Okay, another one is, it may be the same one. Or if, if you're single and you're on a date and you're supposed to meet your date at 8.15 and you're waiting, your date doesn't show up at 8.15. 820. 825 come. 830, you're like, it must be me. Mm. They they don't like me. Mm. They should have called and it must be me. Well, no, probably because they had a flat tire. And uh, or their phone died. Or their phone died. And they couldn't call you. And they couldn't call you. But you're thinking that it's you already. Already without getting and information. One of those uh cognitive distortions are called catastrophizing. Right. There's, there's 15 of them. Right? So there's that one, catastrophizing, so, is one, a common one. Are, yeah. they, are they looking for yeah. us to come in? No, they, they, oh, they, they left the garage yeah, they, we, We've got a few more minutes. This is good stuff here. See, here's, here's why we're so passionate about this, because there's a stigma attached to mental health illnesses. Mm -hmm. People, well, one, most, some people self-diagnose Mm -hmm. other people mm -hmm. or self-diagnose themselves and diagnose other people the one thing that just cringes our skin mm. they are narcissistic mm -hmm. do you really know what that means or did you get it up on a podcast or a youtube or are as they, opposed to other disorders that have narcissistic tendencies, tendencies. right doesn't so, make them a narcissist right 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 Stigma, that's what I was saying, right? Yes, there's a stigma associated with mental health. And we and we see, so we've been doing this work for how many years? Oh, goodness. Well, you've been doing it longer than me. Okay. 30? Eee. Whoa. Uh, 30 years. You look good. You look Thank healthy. you. Damn, you looking real. Oh, stop it. Ooh. <laughs> oh. Oh, hey, son. Hey, son. And then doing? we started okay. <laughs> um, the marriage ministry, and you joined me shortly after that. Right. So 25 years. Yeah. Yeah. So we've been doing this for a while, and, mm -hmm. and that's why we're so passionate about it. This is all we know. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes people look, I don't know, I can't say how people look at us, but we're, we we come from a clinical <laughs> mindset, and we see so many clients. And we have so many clients that we see, <laughs> and not all have mental health issues. But, but we're so passionate about this because people are not taking it seriously. And they're not getting to ha the help. I mean, we could be meeting with someone and share this with them. Don't ever see them again. Right. Disappear. Right. Gone. Right. And I'll say this: I'll have to speak on the on the from the men's perspective. Recently, kudos to the men because mm -hmm. you've been kicking in the door. Yes. You've been saying that, hey, I need help. I need help. And tired it's, of I'm, tired. I get texts from men, mm -hmm. and that's all they say. I need help. And that's it. Mm -hmm. And then they show up and they get therapy. But then there's a percentage of men who don't understand that their behavior may have something to do with their past experiences, mm -hmm. upbringing, and mm -hmm. how they were raised, and maybe some childhood trauma, and maybe some relationships, and maybe being bullied. And we weren't taught how to we weren't told how to express our feelings or identify feelings and say how we feel. So we shut down. It's impacting our marriage. I talked very quickly about that. Mm -hmm. So so we just are passionate about mental health and, and not just people who are married, but singles. And more than likely, um, if you are watching this um, and you don't have a mental health disorder, you know someone that does or you're married to someone who does. And we don't want you to have to suffer alone. Get help, you know, get help. Um, and because you're gonna suffer. Um, it's not going to get better just because you cried or you wrote a letter or you complained. Um, you could pray that they will go get help, but even that requires intervention. Right? So we're just going to encourage you to do something different 
yeah. um, because the way that you, you know, how, how people usually cope with mental illness is that they either confront it and it goes bad, they avoid it and it gets worse, or they leave. And the fourth option is get help. Therapy works. It does. And we're not saying it because we do it. Therapy really works. We know there's there's barriers, there's fears, there's whether, um, I mean, there's a lot of barriers that people have, but it mm -hmm. really works and we just are passionate. So we're gonna do a couple of more of these vlogs on mental health. We may go specifically into specific um, disorders. Maybe. Actually, I was gonna say, if there's a disorder that you would like us to talk about, put it in our chat and we'll work on presenting a different one because we're going to do it either way this is we're going to do a mental yeah. health series because it yeah. is plaguing um it's plaguing marriages and it's very predominant in families of color um other ethnicities will go to therapy they will but our culture african-american black american um west indian american we just struggle with that stigma and you know there's nothing wrong with getting help um if you find that your interpersonal relationships Sorry. continue to fail or if you um are are getting fired from different jobs all the time uh, that was about to tell you that's what was gonna happen what? damn <laughs> i knew it see because i don't do the most i said i'm not gonna do nothing i'm not gonna stop and now look, I can't do the vlogging. So let's just stop it. <laughs> Who's doing the most now? Me. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead and finish your point. I knew I know my car. I, I was like I thought it was gonna stop. No, then... it doesn't. You have to hold uh, it. I'm sorry. If you let go. Sorry. I know, you can laugh. It's You're funny. laughing. Uh, yeah. I'm like, go ahead and finish yeah, your point. I, I I'm not finishing the point looking like this. You look good though. Honey, I'm not. No. Okay, so we uh, just had a moment. Derek opened the sunroof thinking that it was only going to open the inner roof. And this is my car, so I knew that the other roof was gonna open and I got wet. And I didn't want to do the most. <laughs> so when he did it, I didn't say anything, but we stopped the video because I got wet. Right, so as we were rehashing, he's sorry, he apologized. You know, we don't, we don't care, make things like that a big, big, big deal. Cause this is my car, so I know how to stop it from opening up the other part. And he doesn't. He was trying to get more light in the video. Sorry. But we were talking about making this a teachable lesson. Think about who you're married to and if that had happened to you, if they would have been able to laugh and apologize right. and move on because mm -hmm. people with mental health disorders aren't able to do that you know i got shocked i mean the thing the water went in my eyeballs and went on my nice blouse my new blouse too but it wasn't intentional it was for the greater good and he didn't know so i was able to put all of that in perspective within two seconds flat right mm -hmm. Mental health issues, people with mental health issues aren't able to do that. They aren't able to adjust. Um, if they're quick tempered, if they're triggered, if they're anxious, right. they would not have been able to sit here and still have a conversation with a wet blouse. Right. And so we're seriously wanting whoever is watching right. this to start taking inventory on who you're married to because if you know that they have a those tendencies and it's continually causing conflict in the marriage and then it rolls into another conflict then that means that there's something wrong and a lot of marriages end because they didn't do anything about it because they didn't know and really honestly treatment was only needed treatment just treatment just get us some help and we don't even push meds all the time there's so many natural remedies now for mental health um, issues for anxiety mm -hmm. and for depression. You don't even have to take a bunch of chemicals if you need that hormonal balance. But if it's not even something medicinally 
and it's just more of a, a personality type disorder, there's ways to use coping mechanisms for that as well. So we just really wanted to start this series by talking about mental health and how it impacts the marriage a little bit more in depth mm -hmm. than we did in a few vlogs before. Right. Yeah, because that could have gone south quickly. Mm -hmm. Mental health, cognitive distor distortions, mm -hmm. anger issues, mm -hmm. it could have escalated. And we want to help you get to this place when something like this happens, how would you respond? Send us, you know, you guys have been wonderful in sending responses in your, in, um, in the uh, response. Your chat? On the chat on mm -hmm. uh, YouTube and on Instagram. Um, yeah, but send, send what would you do or what would happen in that scenario? Or you don't have to say you, you can say third person, but most people wouldn't be able to handle this kind of situation if they're dealing with some type of mental health. And that's issue. marriage. You know, we, we are imperfect. Yeah. We're going to make mistakes and we're going to, you know, mess up sometimes. Yeah. Um, mental health determines whether you can recover or not. Right. So now that you know what, what you're, you're going to do, do with, with it. it. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time. We're going to be talking about some specific mental health disorders in the next vlog. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. It's okay. You good? No, you're just going to treat me out to something, to somewhere. Um, okay. All my love languages, all of them. Acts of service, gifts, mm -hmm. quality time, mm -hmm. physical touch. That's the one. Physical touch? Mm -hmm. Is it every vlog that you have to talk about sex? <laughs> like every vlog? The first one was about sex. The second one. I didn't about... say the word sex. You were implying. I did not say. Did y'all hear me say sex? Because they, 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 they're probably it. gone by now. Oh, they're they they, gone? They're gone. Why are they gone? Because they finished watching this. It's been too long. Like 16, 18 no, minutes. No, somebody's watching. Did Anybody? I say sex? No, you no did. I did not. The way you looked. I said physical touch. And then you did your shoulder like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, that's, I'm sorry, y'all. We're that, gone. That shimmy was we're, like. We're, we're gone that now. Was like, yeah. No, he acted, he acted scared of cat. He acted like a scaredy cat. Last time I was scared, <laughs> it was like when I was two years old. <laughs> and the dog came in the house. No, we really And I jumped. Listen, that was the last time I was scared when anything. When you were two, you remember that? I remember that. That was the last time because I was not scared of anything. Nothing. Oh, okay. Zero. Well, listen. We have derailed. Do you understand from the projects We've of Philly? We've derailed. Ain't nothing scaring us. We have derailed. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Sorry we're so silly. Bye. Bye.